Hey guys, what's up? You're watching the EJ Tech Show and it's Diwali. As you can see, we've dolled up for the occasion. We've put in the effort. I think it's paid off. Yeah, a little bit. We, we, look yeah. we clean up pretty well. We clean up pretty well. You look yeah. good with that jacket. Thank you. And Thank that you. Kurta. It's a nice kurta. It's yeah. piffy. Yeah, side, you're also looking nice. Thanks. So. <laughs> anyway, as it's Diwali, we thought we'd do things a little bit differently. Instead of reviewing one gadget, we thought we'd focus on five gadgets. So we've got five smartphones over here, all priced under 25,000 rupees. And we feel, depending on your preference, all of these phones make for a good Diwali gift. Yep. Uh, the under 25k range has really been heating up these yeah. past six months. We've got so much, like, so much good on offer here. There's good specifications, there's good hardware, good software. Everyone's doing a really good job competing. And for Diwali, ultimately, a phone is, you know, sort of a no-brainer of a gift. That's right. something that almost everyone uses. Yeah. Um, almost everyone needs an upgrade at all times, unless you know someone who's obviously just recently yeah. got one. But these are what, at least in our opinion, some of the best phones yeah. in the under 25k range worth gifting this Diwali. Okay, so let's uh, introduce the contenders. We've got two Vivo phones over here. We've got the Vivo V20. We've got its younger brother, Vivo V20 SE. Uh, we have the much-hyped OnePlus Nord. And then we've got the Samsung Galaxy M51 with its monster battery. And we've got the Realme 7 Pro Special Edition, which is all about the vegan lifestyle. So all of these are offering you similar specifications to some yeah, extent, yeah. but they, each, each one of these phones have their own unique features that you know might be appreciated by one set of customers or it might not be appreciated by one set of customers. So I think this is a very versatile group of phones that we've got over here. And I want to start with my personal favorite, uh, which is the Vivo V20. Actually. Honestly, it's mine too. Like yeah. I've said it before, this is one of the best looking phones of this year. Couldn't agree more. So this is without a doubt, one of the most gorgeous looking phones, probably the most gorgeous looking phone this year in 2020. And Vivo has to be applauded for its design engineering, uh, especially the sunset melody color. When I hold it in my hand and I move it around a little bit, it just throws these beautiful yeah. shades of pink, purple, light blue, depending on what angle you're holding the phone in. And more importantly, it is extremely lightweight and slim. So yeah. they've really outdone themselves. 7.48 millimeters, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And that's really, really slim for a smartphone in 2020, considering it also has a mammoth, um, I think 64 megapixel sensor on the back, triple rear camera array. Yeah. So it's got the specifications packed in, but even then they managed to really make it nice and sleek, which is something that Vivo is especially well known for. And that's something similar what they did on the Vivo V20 SE as well. Yeah. Now, yes, we did mention this design is a very shiny design. It's, it's much more glossy. You can yeah. it'll attract much more fingerprints. Oh, smudges. like yeah. nothing else, but, but still. The good news is that it does come with the plastic cover in the box, yeah. so you can just slap that on if fingerprints do bother you. Uh, it doesn't bother a lot of people, I've noticed, by the way. Yeah. They're okay with it, but if it does, yeah, you've got a plastic cover over there. Not uh, just that, for a phone that costs less than 20,000, yeah. this looks really this nice and premium. Nice, yeah. So it really starts to resemble the Vivo's uh, 2020 um, design language. Because if you notice this, it looks similar to the Vivo X50. That looks similar to the Vivo X50 Pro yeah, when so it this, comes to the this camera. This resembles more design. the X series for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that way, I really think Vivo has come a long way with their design. Uh, gone are the days when they would do all those funky experiments with diamond cut uh, arrays or those yeah. loop ones. It's, it's just really nice and simple now. Yeah. And I really like this design language. And while the design language is great, both these phones also have one very excellent common feature, and that's the selfie camera. Yeah. So this one is offering you a 44 megapixel uh, selfie camera. You reviewed both these phones. Yeah. Fact. It has IAF and yeah. eye autofocus. Yeah. So basically, it'll track your yeah. uh, eyes no matter where you look, whether you're taking a video or a selfie, you're always going to be in sharp focus. Yeah. And that's a feature that's common to both, even though that has a 44 megapixel mm. primary sensor this on the front, and this has a 32 megapixel. Yeah. Still, it's very good detail, very crisp quality of pictures. So that's something that's really impressive from Vivo. Yeah. They've always kind of uh, focused more on the front camera for and, the customers. Uh, both get the same beautiful 6.44 inch uh, AMOLED screen. Yeah. Uh, both don't have high refresh rates, but that's okay because the AMOLED screens over here are crisp enough, they feel yeah. fluid enough, 
and because at least the Vivo V20, it comes with Android 11. This is one yeah. of the, after pay, uh, Google, uh, Vivo was the only smartphone maker to offer you a phone that had Android 11 right out of the box. Yeah. So that's a big plus. And that's Google. Android 11 at this yeah. affordable price point. Yeah. That's something that not a lot of uh, manufacturers are doing right now. So that's really commendable. I wish they had done that on the Vivo uh, V20 yeah, which SE only gets as well. Android 10, but still. It's yeah, but it's still. Fun Touch has come yeah. a long way. It no longer looks like that. Uh, tired old Android, uh, sorry, iOS clone. It's really snappy now. It's really nice and refreshed. Bloatware is still present, but still at a much uh, lower rate than it was before, yeah. which is something that's really nice to see yeah. at this price point. One key difference between both these phones, the Vivo V20 and V20 SE, is of course that Snapdragon chipset. So one's yeah. got uh, the more, I would say, more power efficient Snapdragon 720G processor, yeah. and the less powerful Snapdragon 665 yeah. processor. Now obviously, it's good to have a better processor, no doubt, we don't, we don't need to explain the science behind that. But that being said, even the Vivo, uh, uh, V20 SE, SE yeah. getting confused between both these names. Well, they have the same, one is SE, one is not the SE variant. Uh, the SE variant uh, is okay for day to day, but if you're looking for gaming, if you're looking for higher multitasking, then I would recommend the Vivo V20 for yeah. sure. Not, not that this is a complete slouch, it'll still get the job done, but if you're planning to go in for high intensive games for long sessions, then yes, the Snapdragon 720G will be more up to your speed for that task. But if it's gaming we're talking about, then we can't not mention this bad boy right here, yeah. which is the OnePlus Nord. This out of the herd has the best processor backed in, the Snapdragon 765G. And this is something that OnePlus is well known for, backing in great specs at a mid-range price point, which is something they hadn't done for a long time. And that's why the Nord was that great. If you hear people celebrating, that's because this phone is generally <laughs> one of the most best-selling phones right now yeah. at this price point. People are burning crackers all the yeah. way, it's banned, but why, why not? Why not, yeah, yeah. it's Diwali, I guess. Uh, so, <laughs> apart from the good timing there, uh, this, yeah, this has three main features for me, the OnePlus Nord. Uh, the first, obviously, being the software. So, you've got Oxygen OS over here, which yeah. is arguably the best software you can get on an Android smartphone. There's that. Of course, then there is the high refresh rate display 90 here, 90 Amazon hertz display, over here. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, you've also got the performance. He's already spoken about it. Snapdragon 765G, great for multitasking, great for gaming. So it's, it just looks like that OnePlus has brought the best features yeah. from its more flagship phones over here at a much more affordable price point. So OnePlus, uh, going from a flagship killer then to just being an outright flagship, yeah. and now joining the mid-range bandwagon yeah. has completed its transformation. And it's, yeah, it's complete, they're and finally here. Anyone still trying to give a bad rap to OnePlus for making a phone like this, for trying to nitpick about its qualities, just remember, this is still one of the only phones you can buy at a th nearly 30,000 rupee price point that this has 12 GB of RAM. Yeah, the starting variant uh, is it's under 25,000 rupees. Yeah. But I do have a couple of issues with it, yeah. uh, which is, again, you can argue that it doesn't really matter, but. The first obvious problem is the starting variant gets only 64 GB of storage. And I spoke about this in my review as well. There's no uh, expansion slot available over here. So you're stuck with that. Now, yeah, you can get uh, Google storage and all of that stuff. Uh, but still, it's nice to have more onboard storage when you buy a phone. You know, you don't want to spend more money when you've already spent upwards yeah. of 25,000 rupees. Uh, then, of course, the camera. Lots of reviewers have spoken about this. It yeah. doesn't give you the most mind blowing. It's does the it's job. Versatile. Yeah. It's versatile enough, but yeah. then uh, that versatility comes at the cost of quality. Uh, yeah. Because while it may have an extra macro and depth sensor and everything, it doesn't produce as good results as some of the, its rivals might. And that actually brings us to the Samsung Galaxy M51. Because the Samsung Galaxy M51 is a similarly priced contender, yeah. but it gets a much nicer camera yeah. array. But that's because Samsung with the M series has been building upon its camera yeah. technology at a mid-range price point for quite a while. We've been seeing like the M31, M21, mm. M, uh, and now M31S, and then the M51 finally, with this really nice 64 megapixel I, I'd camera say out array. Of all of these though, this is probably the most balanced phone you yeah. can buy. True, it gets the biggest battery, it gets a really nice bright large screen, it gets a really nice camera array, and it's got um, your One UI, Android One UI 2.5, which means it gives you sort of the best balance of all these phones. And in that respect, you're absolutely right. It's a very but, well balanced uh, you, device. You said a 
big battery, but I think you're understating it. It's a massive battery. It's 7,000 well, yeah. mAh battery. And we, when we reviewed this phone, I mentioned it then as well, I'm gonna mention it again. Uh, let's just put that into perspective. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S7, which is a tablet, has a 7,040 mAh battery. And this has 7,000, so now Samsung has entered tablet territory with a smartphone. So that's pretty big. Imagine this, you get the battery of the M51, okay? You get the processor of the OnePlus I know what you're going to get into. <laughs> this is like assembling your make your own yeah. phone and every it's a dream for every have a nice Mr. Potato there. headphone. Yeah, yeah. You, if they did that, that'd be great. But I just don't know how you're going to be able to uh, keep that, you know, economically viable in the long run. If okay. company did do that. If we're talking about economic viability, then yeah. let's talk about the Realme 7 Pro. Because this phone gets under 20K, it gets a good processor, which is a Snapdragon 720G. Yeah. It's got a 64 megapixel quad camera system at the back. Mm. And it's got a really nice large display with a hole punch. Which means it's giving you practically everything you need in a daily driver, yeah. including all the high specs which attract buyers. Mm. And honestly, my biggest point, plus point for this is, it doesn't catch fingerprints at the back. Because of that, uh, we can leather cover. So this is a special yeah. edition variant. They do have the normal uh, mirror variants as well. I think it's in the silver variant and the blue. dark blue variant. Yeah. But this one is a special edition one, and this is for someone who has a more bigger demand for fo from phones when it comes to design. They have something yeah. very specific in their mind. And this this will answer that, uh, that because problem Because this definitely does not look generic from yeah. any point of view. Yeah. It's, These are this orange and light gray colors that just runs through the phone. It looks it looks really nice, but you had said this also when we uh, reviewed this phone, that the actual uh, USB for this phone isn't actually the back cover, but what you get in the box, and that's that yes. 65 watt fast charging adapter. Yes. And it'll top the phone in like 40 minutes, zero to 100%. That's great. Honestly, I'm I'm loving the fact that phones at this price point are now getting fast charging. In fact, while we're recording this, just yesterday we started getting uh, reports of how there might be a new OnePlus Nord phone, which will also get 65 watt charging yeah. fairly soon. So it's good to see more manufacturers come in with fast charging at this price point because that just means we're getting big batteries, we're getting good yeah. processors, we're getting good good screens, and we're getting fast charging. Like. What else is left? It just kind of is now blurring the line between a flagship phone and exactly. a mid-range phone. All right, so obviously this was, uh, we aren't doing which phone is best out of the yeah. bunch. We uh, can't pick a favorite. You can't, can't, you can't expect us to but, pick a But let's do that anyway because it's, yeah. it's fun. Let's do it. Uh, so once again, we've got the Vivo V20. We've got the Vivo V20 SE. We've got the OnePlus Nord. We've got the Galaxy M51. And we've got the Realme 7 Pro. From this bunch, which yeah. is your favorite? I would have to say the Vivo V20. Okay. Because the Vivo V20, it just looks so nice every time you pick it up. And that's something you do a lot of times a day. You pick up your phone multiple times a day. Yeah. And you're gonna have a big smile on your face every time you pick it up and just see this beautiful pattern on the back. Yeah. I don't see that happening with any other phone that's out true. here. That's true. The Realme 7 Pro comes close, yeah. but then not really. This just takes the cake every time. Exactly. And like I said at the start, this is my personal favorite as well, the Vivo V20. Uh, it's focusing on the beautiful design is focusing on the camera and is focusing on general good day-to-day -day performance. And that's pretty much what every customer is looking for. At yeah, time. and pretty much that's what you could look for in a gift for one of your loved ones this Diwali, because all these phones are under 25K or somewhere in that category, uh, depending on how you spec it, what RAM model you go for, or what storage model you go for. So if you're looking for a phone this Diwali for one of your loved ones or one of your friends, then you have your pick of the lot. Okay, I think on that note, it's time to wrap up our Diwali buying guide. Tell us which smartphone you're going to buy this Diwali, or if you're going to buy in generally, we've got some really nice phones over here. Let us know your feedback, which works best for you, which doesn't. We love to hear feedback. We love to hear comments. And apart from all that, just have a great Diwali. Don't burn too many crackers. I don't think you're allowed to anyway because yeah. there's a ban. Yeah. But if you are trying to do it, don't do it. Hashtag save our lungs. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag save our lungs. Let's have clean air. And of course, keep yourself safe. The pandemic isn't over. But uh, we'll see you very soon.